Good morning, everyone. I think we can go ahead and get started. I've uh, got a lot to cover today, so thank you for joining in today. Uh, for those of you that are new, my name is Alex. I conduct the webinars just like I do each and every week. Um, for those of you that are returning, welcome back. Generally, how we do things is we do it uh, kind of a question and answer type of session, but last week and, and again this week, we're going to do more of a topic type of situation. So we're going to go ahead and, and cover this week's topic first. Um, if you have any questions regarding the topic while we're covering it, please utilize the chat feature um, and ask your question. Um, please try to make, keep it relevant to what we're actually talking about at the time. Um, and then once we're finished covering today's topic, then we'll actually get into uh, more general question and answers. Um, so if at any point in time, um, either I'm going too fast or our speaker's going too fast, please utilize the chat feature and, and let us know. We'll be happy to kind of slow things down a little bit and, uh, and cover things again if we need to. So with that said, this week's topic is SEO. Um, and to talk about SEO um, this week, I've brought in a special guest, um, Nick, who is our SEO specialist here at Live Edit. So he's going to take over for a little bit and kind of go over some of the basic things um, with SEO and how it pertains to your website. So if you have any questions for Nick while he's talking, please utilize the chat feature and submit them and we will do our best to get them answered for you. Um, also, to keep to, just to let you know, um, the webinar is, is being recorded just like it is each and every week. Um, so if you lose connection, if you have to drop off um, or anything like that, you can always feel free to, to re-watch the webinar at a later date at any point in time. Um, it should be posted within the support portal uh, within 24 hours. Um, so, but we'll cover that a little bit more um, later on. So, all right. With that said, let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to turn it over to Nick right now. So um, hopefully he'll be able to take care of this for you. Hi, guys. Let's see, Alex, are you going to make me the host on here? Yep. All righty. So hope you're all doing well today. As Alex said, my name is Nick Westerlin. I'm a SEO specialist that works for live edit here. So today I just kind of wanted to run through a few things. Uh, it's going to talk about content and the importance of it. Also title tags and description tags for your metadata. We'll also run through, oh, need to share my screen here. Apparently that didn't work. How's that? We're seeing it now. Okay. So as I was saying, uh, we'll run through a few things like content, uh, the importance of it, alt tags and title tags on images and kind of why you should do that. Also, some stuff uh, you guys will notice in your pages menu. I'll elaborate on that a little bit, such as your SEO title and meta description. And we'll just go through that. So to start things off, uh, I think I'd like to talk about content and why you guys should have unique content. So when you get these sites, there's a lot of text that's already in there, and that's meant to give you guys a foundation to start with and to build upon. Um, you want to have unique content for your website so that, when the search engines are calling it, you know, that's that's unique to your business and to your identity. It describes what you do, the services you offer, just the things that totally encompass your business. Um, another point, too, I want to make is about header tags and the importance of those. So let's see. On this page here, this is the first bit of information on your page. And this is what it's about. It's it's your training, the trainings you offer. So what you want to make sure is that first bit of information is a header one tag. And you can highlight the text as you enter it in and then go, um, let me see, headers, header one. And you'll see there's six different options here. Now, these work in a hierarchy. So typically, you'd want to have header one. That's the first bit of information on your page that defines what it's about. Now, your header two would be a subcategory of that. So uh, this is your training page. Now, if you offered personal training or coaching, you just drag in a text box here. This Let's say this section here would be about personal training. So what I'll want to do is highlight that guy, go header to save changes. And now when the search engines read this, it'll go, okay, this page is about my training. And then this is an area of importance because it's a header too. So this is on personal training. 
And now you would want to have a good bit of information about the personal training that you guys offer at your business, um, what you, what sets you apart from the other people. Here's where you would say you do one-on-one -on -one training, two-on-one -on -one training, group personal training, anything like that. If you offer more services too, absolutely include those on those pages. Um, the main thing is you want to try to have as much content on your website as you possibly can. It gives the search engines much more to read through. As I said before, it's unique to your business and you want to have your own identity there. And so do you guys have any questions on header tags? Seen any questions, Alex? Okay. I'm trying to unmute you here, Alex, but not seeing how I can do that. Sorry for this little delay, folks. All right. How's that, Alex? That is good. All right. There um, we go. Paula asks, do the search engines look for header tags? Yep, they will. And um, there's actually a little bit of debate on that. If it's You always want to have header one as the highest point on your website. But the search engines will look at whatever header tag is posted highest on the page. So if this one was an H2, they would still see this as important. But it can get a little convoluted then moving down your page. So if this was an H2, and then also personal training was an H2, the search engine sees that as they're almost the same weight. And so you can use these header tags to your advantage then and say, you know, my training, that's what I want to have the most weight because this is what this is all about. Now, personal training is a subcategory of that, and so that has a lot of weight too, but I want to make that my header two just so it doesn't overarch with the header one here. Okay. Um, Rick asks, can you back up and talk a little bit generally? Like, what does SEO stand for? Can you kind of just do a okay. basic, you know, for beginners, what's SEO? Yeah, so search and SEO stands for search engine optimization. And essentially, you're trying to optimize your website for the search engines. So you want to make it readable. I mean, regardless of how beautiful your website is or aesthetically pleasing, there's a lot of things you have to do with the text itself and with the metadata that makes the search engines read it. So when I touch on the title tags and alt tags, that'll be something I'll explain to you on how um, why the search engines read that or what the importance of that is. It's, it's pretty much just trying to make your website very easily readable for the search engines. And so by following a few rules like with these header tags, by doing alt tags, proper titling and descriptions on your pages, those are some really easy steps to help boost your organic SEO and to lay a good foundation for the future of your website. Okay, Paula asks, how far, do, how far down the header tags one, two, three is important? They must find something unimportant. Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, from what I've researched and what I've learned, the main importance lies up to header three. So header one, two, and three are your most important ones. Header four, five, and six don't carry that much weight anymore. They used to back in the day, but as SEO, it's, it's ever-changing, so... There's always new things to keep up on. Excuse me. Um, but header four, five, and six, a lot of people just use those for styling classes, which is you 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 can set those up to appear a certain way, have a certain font style or whatever. But if you're still setting it up on your website, I think it's good to to utilize these responsibly and to try to, you know, if you do have a subcategory of your header two, so if it's uh, here we would go personal training. Now a subcategory that could be one-on-one -on -one personal training. And so I would want to make that my H3. Now if there was some kind of a, you know, little bit of information with my one-on-one -on -one personal training, that would also be considered a category in itself. I don't really have anything off the top of my head that I could do, but you would want to make that a header four then too. Like after, so if I do my one-on-one, -on -one, 
here I would, you know, talk about how one-on-one -on -one personal training at my business involves this and this and this. That would you'd want that to be your paragraph text. Um, anything that's under your header that isn't of importance should always be your paragraph text, and that that's you know uh, easily readable for the search engines too. We've got a question: Can you have different formats for the headers as well? Which you can, um, Nick. If you could um, go into the design tab, please. Okay. And click on typography. If you scroll down a little bit, after the main text, you'll see listings for heading one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is where you can go and you can customize the look for each and every one of those headings. If you want your heading one to have a specific look, this is where you can customize that. You can select font, size, color, etc. And you can set your different headings for different looks if you want to. If you wanted to keep them all the same, you can certainly do that as well. You have complete control over how you want those headings to look. So you yep, would just go in here and make those. Or... Yep, you would just go in here and make those changes. And then whenever you're done, just click the Save Changes button on the left there. So here, for instance, I'll go. Uh, I like having that Oswald text, but I want it a little bit bigger, so I'll go up to 19. Uh, I want it to show a little thicker, so I'll go bold. And let's make it italic, just just for giggles here. So now we'll click out of that guy. Save changes. Changes are saved. And now you'll see that the font here is a 19 text. It's a little italicized. And as Alex said, you can personalize this for really anything you want, any of your typography on the website. Uh, another question that came in from Paula, what is organic SEO? Organic SEO is SEO that it, it happens organically. You, you basically grow it yourself. Um, there's paid SEO or paid traffic, which is if you use Google AdWords or any of those kind of services that you have to pay so much for pay-per-click advertising or anything like that, that's not organic SEO. I, I try to solely focus on organic SEO. For one, it's a lot cheaper. You're not paying anyone to do it, and it's, it's simple too. I mean, you set your website up, you put your information out there. If you're located in a certain area, I'm not sure if this contact page has anything on, but we'll check it out here. Um, so, for instance, if you were, you know, located in St. Cloud, Minnesota or somewhere like that, you would want to say on your website, this is my location, here's my address, and the search engine would see that. And that goes along with a NAP score. Your NAP score stands for name, address, and phone number. And that's something that you really want to make sure you keep consistent across anything you create, whether it's your website, your Facebook page, a Yelp page, uh, Google My Business listing, any kind of directory listings you create, you want to make sure that the name is always the same across it. It also has the same phone number, and it also has the same address. And that creates just a consistency that the search engines really like. It shows that you have your stuff together, that you know what you're doing, and it, it, it won't confuse the search engines because, like, Google has a great algorithm, but there's things you can do that can mess it up, and then that can hurt you. And you're not going to be able to call them and say, fix it. They're going to say, you got to do it on your own. And so if your business name in this instance it's Full Circle Health Coaching, write that out the same way on everything you do. Full Circle Health Coaching. Um, if it's all bold, keep it all bold or keep it capitalized. That's that's your branding as well. Um, now, when you're see. talking about the address and physical location, mm -hmm. what if you don't have a physical location? If you don't have a physical location, then it's kind of hard to focus on local SEO and you're looking – more for something, you know, global. If you train people from all over the U.S., you're going to want to advertise on your website that, you know, you just don't focus in Minnesota. You go to Wisconsin, you go to Iowa, you go to South Dakota. And those are things that you have to explain in your text, too. Because if you ever want to rank for South Dakota personal training, you're going to have to say on your website somewhere that you're a personal training studio that offers services to South Dakota. You have to always make it known in your content. Otherwise, if you're not saying it, the search engines aren't going to know. So what you're saying is whatever you want to be known for, whatever you want to be searched for, mm -hmm. you have to put that in the actual content on your pages. Yep, you'll want that to be in there. So, uh, for instance, for Full Circle Health Coaching is a personal training studio 
that offers our personal, our one-on-one, two-on-one, and group personal training services to the South Dakota, North Dakota, Iowa, and Minnesota area. Uh, we're not afraid to travel. We're happy to meet you there. Things like that that can just explain where you're at with it and you know what you what you're offering these people. Paula asks, does the SEO look at every word on the website? Yep. It'll go through and see every page, every page of content you have and every little bit. And you want to make sure that um, – oops, sorry. I lost my train of thought there. What was the question again? Um, does SEO look at every word on the website? Yep. And so that goes along too with keyword stuffing. And does – do you guys have any you know, information on keyword stuffing? Have you heard about that before? Know about the practice? I don't. We might have touched base on a little bit here and there. Um, okay. If I remember correctly, keyword stuffing is artificially placing keywords on your website to enhance your listings. Yep, to try to enhance your listing, and it's it's become a black hat tactic. Which black hat? Uh, I'm sure you guys know the term. It's it's just not not a good idea to do it. Basically, um, it's cheating. Yeah, essentially. One tactic people use, and this is something I'll tell you guys right now, and I highly recommend you don't do it. You know, it's your website. It's up to you. But if I were to create a text box here and, you know, our business offers personal training, health coaching, and all these other things, you would type in, you know, you could type in these are all your keywords. Now, some things that people do is they'll keep that there. They'll make it a paragraph text and then they'll make the text white or they'll make it so it it's not seen unless you highlight it. So now wherever that area was here, anyone that comes on here won't see it, but this is considered real black hat tactics. You're you're hiding these terms that you want to be found for. And now no one, you know, people will look at this. Or the search engines will read this and see, okay, so this bit of information here doesn't really have anything to do with this page. Um, this business is about health coaching and personal training, but this bit of information here doesn't fit, and they'll notice that too. And so, just really don't do that. That's it's poor tactics, and your website can actually get penalized for it. And you know, rebuilding after that that that'll be just a pain in itself. Um, the other bit of, about keyword stuffing too is, say on uh, a page you want to talk about how you offer personal training and this and that. Don't be redundant with it. Don't say our personal training services uh, encompass this and then our personal training services are this and then we do personal training about this and personal training here and here. If you keep throwing in that same keyword, first off, it, it just doesn't sound very great or professional if you're reusing the same terms over and over and over again. But Google will read it too and they'll, their algorithm can actually pick out like this sentence, you know, it's, it's not necessary. It said it in the previous sentence before, so this doesn't need to be here. You, you want to write out your content like you're talking to someone. Make it easy to read. Because with, with how the search engine algorithms are working now, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but if you do uh, voice to text, if you search on Google and you just ask it a question and it comes up with an answer right away, that's because it's starting to learn how to uh, – it's learning how to read people's questions and – get answers based off content on the website. So you want to try to explain it like you're just talking to a friend about these services. Don't don't get overboard with it using a lot of uh, big terms that you know you people aren't going to know. Because the other thing is too, you don't want to, or you want to have content that's searchable. So people will search for personal training. People will search for health coaching. But if you go even further with that and make it a little more difficult to understand, um, it's, it's not going to show up. You don't, you want people to be able to search your website for regular terms. So if you offer yoga in Savannah, Georgia, you want to have bits and pieces on your website that say it's I'm a yoga service in Savannah, Georgia. We offer to these areas, that kind of thing. All right. We've got a couple of questions. Um, okay. Take Paula's first and then we'll get to Kathy's. Um, okay. Paula, your recent question, can you please explain simply what search engine algorithm means? All you need to know about that is a search engine algorithm is the process that Google uses to search your website. That's it. Yeah. That's their own way that they do it. That's all that that means. Yeah. And your other and question, is a method of ranking part of how many counts of specific words occur in the website? 
Um, that's a debatable topic. Uh, some people have said you should have at least a 4% keyword equity in your content. So if you have 100 words, try to make four of those be the keywords or key phrases you'd like to be found for. That's one way to go about it. I mean, that's a that's a good uh, a guide to go with. Mainly, I, I try to look at it when I'm writing content for websites. I'll write it out and then look at it again and see if there's areas that I could add in keywords that would still fit. Um, so instead of saying we're a, a studio in Savannah, Georgia, offering personal training and this, you could say you're a yoga studio offering this and this and this, like anywhere that you can kind of try to bump up your content as long as it fits. If you're saying yoga, 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 yoga over and over again, that's you may get penalized for that, and that's not very good policy. Right. And this kind of leads into Kathy's question. She asks, will we discuss how do I identify our best keywords and keyword phrases? Well, a lot of times, let me just address this real quick, Nick. Sure. A lot of times with the keywords and keyword phrases, it, it's completely individual. There isn't a uni- universal keyword that you can use for your website. It's, it's your website, it's your business, so you want to make sure that the keywords that you're using relate to your website and your business. And like Nick said, if it's, it's what you want to be searched for. If you're a mm-hmm. health coach in Savannah, Georgia, you want to make sure that those are the kind of keywords that you're using so you come up in a search for health coach in Savannah, Georgia. Yep, and another piece of that too, if there's local areas as well, you know, a town right next to Savannah that you'd also service, I, I like to try to, I look at Google Maps and I'll, I'll pinpoint the location that I'm working with and then look around like a 25 mile radius. You know, how far out do you think people would drive to come to your services? Or if you go to them, how far are you willing to go? Then tell on your website that this is, you know, we'll serve this area and this area and this area as well. Cause that can help you show up then in a search for that area for your service. If you're, if you just say you are in Savannah, Georgia and you offer this, then you know, chances are you're not going to show up as well for a surrounding city. But if you do mention in that that you're located on this street and you serve this town next to me and this town and this town, chances are you're, you're going to be uh, have much higher chances to show up. All right. What Rick asks, how often does Google recheck your website? Uh, that's kind of up to them. Um, I've seen it happen where it's it's weeks, maybe a month it takes. Uh, you do have the power in your hands, though, to do that yourself. Google has a service called, I, th- I believe they call it Search Console now, but it used to be Google Webmaster Tools. So if you just did a search for Google Webmaster Tools, it would come up, and here's my Webmaster Tools. So in here, there's some... Um, things you can do to help your website. You can actually fetch a recrawl for individual pages or for your whole website in general. So if I wanted to work on this website here and say I just changed my about page, I included a lot of more information, I retagged images, you know, I just added some things that aren't currently indexed in the search engines. I can go here, I can fetch it as Google. And if I wanted to crawl the whole website, I can go here. You know, this is saying crawl this URL. I would go fetch, and it would load it up. Now, if I just wanted to do the contact page, you would just take the end of your URL strain. So in this case, it's contact us. I'd fetch it. Now Google looks. It loads it up, and here it says submit to index. Now what this will do is resubmit that page to the index so that new information will become available within the next I'd like to say 24 to 48 hours, possibly the next day. It's it's really open. They, they don't have a defined time criteria. But here I can say crawl only this URL or this URL and its direct links. By direct links, it's saying, so if I were to crawl, let me go back to this page here that we were on earlier. So if I wanted to crawl this page, um, this guy so the direct link here would be get the conversation started so it would be slash contact is a direct link off this page here this recipe is a direct link these are all direct links that'll get recrawled too but if I only want this URL crawled I would just do that click go 
and now that URL has been resubmitted to the index. And so all that new information will come up as soon as it's available. Um, that's your best case to do in if you do add new content instead of waiting, it's it's really nice and it's easy to to just go right to that page, recrawl that page, and then now that information will become it'll become ready to the public much sooner than it would just waiting on Google or Bing or any of the search engines. Bing has a webmaster tool function similar to Google's too, where you can submit sitemaps and uh, you can. There's some good information in there. Maybe another day we could do a session on some webmaster tools training, and give you guys some more information on that if you'd be interested. Nick, did your screen freeze? Uh, no, it looks like it's still working. Because I'm at least for me when I'm looking at your screen, it's stuck. What are you seeing? Uh, you're stuck on the home page. Mm -hmm. Stop sharing your screen and just reshare it. Okay, sounds good. Might just need a little refresher there. There you go. Oh, all right, now we're back. Uh, okay, so Paula asks, what do you learn about your website with this process? Uh, webmaster tools or which process? Care to elaborate, Paula? Crawling. Crawling, you don't really learn anything. Crawling is yeah. basically, if you make a change to your home page, for example, instead of waiting for a search engine like Google to re-index that page at whatever their schedule is, crawling is a way for you to have that page indexed right away. It's just a manual process. You can go in and yep. say, Google, crawl my website right now. So That's what for it instance, means. on this page that I, I just added this personal training bit here, and threw in some more information there. In the previous index, that wasn't there because I just added it today. So now by recrawling it, this bit of information will get indexed in the search engines, and that can help boost your ranking too. The quicker you do that, the quicker you could see an increase or a decrease in your SEO. But by, but by adding this content here, I mean, I could almost guarantee that you wouldn't see any decrease, and in fact, it would probably get better because for one, you're adding in a new keyword, and you're giving it weight with that header two tag, and then you're explaining your service to and where you offer it. Paul asks, so when someone searches for personal training, it would then show up better? Yep, so because I recrawled it, and once that gets indexed then, like I said, 24, 48 hours, you could see that get re-indexed. And then, yeah, your chances of this page or your website in general showing up for personal training increased by just including this 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 term in a header two tag. And now I do want to say though, like don't don't try to make all of your content header twos and header threes to try to get that SEO benefit, because that'll be a black hat tactic too, and you don't want to do that. You want to have, you know, personal training and even, you know, in Savannah or something like that. You can you can add on more terms there too in Georgia or personal training to in Minnesota or anything like that if you'd like. But you don't want to use these header tags over and over and over and over again on the page just because that, that they'll lose their benefit then at that point. If you have all your text be a header two, then it just looks like all that text has the same importance. Is this making sense for everybody so far? Am I going too fast? I just love to talk about SEO. so. <laughs> SEO is a little bit confusing. I mean, there's there's kind of a lot to it. So if you have questions, by all means, utilize the chat feature and let us know. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to elaborate more if I'm going too quick or if you guys are curious about something I've touched on. Uh, one of the things that I would be nice for you to be able to go over, Nick, is what can they do SEO-wise within their website right away? So right away... Um, for instance, this page now, my training. So we just created it. We just threw on a bunch of content. What you always want to make sure that you do is create SEO titles in your meta descriptions. Now, if I were to Google personal training, St. Cloud, I would see these little bits of information here. So the law of motion, personal training, the law of motion, LLC. Now, this bit of information here, let me get back to the page I was on. 
Sorry about this. There it is. Okay. So this bit of information that you see here, this is what's called your, your title tag. This is, it's metadata. If you, if you weren't using our platform, it'd be much more difficult to input this information. So one of the great features about the Live Edit platform is you can put that in right here. So uh, my page is my training. So my training services would be a good uh, title to start with there. These are, this page is about the services that you offer. Um, this site, what was the name of this? Full Circle Health Coaching? Yeah. So I would want to include for Full Circle Health Coaching because that's my business name. And so when the search engines see this, they'll go, this page is about my training services and the business is Full Health Circle or Full Circle Health Coaching. And now you can see here the character count will go up. Um, 60 characters or less. This is kind of a guideline because it's not it's not it's not defined anywhere if it's 60 characters or if it's more or less. What they look at is the width between the text. So if you had all of this be capitalized text, you could only probably get 40 characters in there. So you want to make sure you're you know capitalizing responsibly. Like how I've done it here is a good way to do it. And so if um, full circle health coaching my training services, say I'm a local business, I can go Savannah, Georgia. Now you notice the character count went over. So this is kind of, like I said, it's kind of a guideline. If you're over, it might be okay. What you'd want to do is wait and see how, how it lands in the search engines. If it's not showing up properly, as you see here, then you might want to tweak it and change it to something else. Just to see how it would fit. And this is where uh, being able to use webmaster tools and recrawling a site comes really in handy. Because previously this page was indexed, but there was no title tag and no meta description. So what the search engines will do then is pull information off the page and populate it, it'll populate it by itself. And so you lose the customizable customization that you can have by putting it in yourself, by letting them do that. So it's always best to do it yourself and especially right after you create a page. Or if, you know, say I just serve an area, so Georgia. Now, now the search engine would see this as, these are, this page is about the personal training services, full circle health coaching, Georgia. So these three terms here now will define your page on what you see when searching it here. Um, your meta description, this is an area that you would want to include good keywords for this page, so, um, Something you could write would be full circle health coaching is a uh, personal training studio offering health coaching, group training, and customized personal training to the Georgia area. Oops. And you want to make sure you spell it right, too. <laughs> yeah, that's really important. Yeah, because people will search, and these keywords that are in here will really help define your page and how it can rank. Um, this keywords area here, you really don't have to put any focus on that. It's not really relevant anymore. It's been like five years since Google focused on keywords. Now they focus on the content. So that's kind of why I've been elaborating on it and saying content really is king. The more you can put on your website, the better. I mean, anytime I work on a website, I leave this box blank just because it really doesn't hold any relevance. Does that make sense with the descriptions and the SEO titles? Um, Kathy asks, what punctuation is not allowed? You can punctuate it any, any way you'd like if you really want to be excited about it, you know, go for it. You but can not really, for, but not for the SEO title. Yep, for the title, um, I, I usually don't punctuate at all. I like to use this. I don't even know what this character is called. Just this line here, but I like to do that. It looks really fresh and clean. Um, let's see. When I hover over this guy, it should appear. So you can kind of see it there. Home, 
line, IN training line, live edit. It just makes it look really clean and broken up. And I try to follow this suit the whole time that I'm working on a site. So I usually would copy this to make sure you update to save it. Now this page would be about me. And if you guys are personal trainers or health coaches, maybe put your name. So I would put about Nick Westerlin or something like that. And then here I would paste that in and it just, it keeps it consistent here. And it, it, it has the same style as you do on all your other pages. And it really looks nice when all of your pages are indexed and you can see your site and see it all fall in suit like this. Um, about me for full circle health coaching. Here you could do Georgia health coach. You know, you can add in another keyword there if you would like, or something that can fit in that's that's relevant to the page. So since this is about me and I'm a health coach, I could say I'm a Georgia health coach. And then I would write a description to follow suit. Sure. Paula asks, can I get access to the SEO material on every page from the pages menu? Yes. When yep. you're in the pages menu, you can access the, the SEO information. And the only SEO information that you're going to see is the SEO title and the meta description. Mm -hmm. But yes, this is where you access it from the pages menu of the website. Now, yep. SEO information also pertains to what's on the actual page itself, like Nick was talking about with your content and using heading tags and, and that kind of stuff. So that's a different aspect of SEO. Yeah, there's there's a few there's a lot of different aspects that go into it, but by focusing on just these few that I'm telling you, um, you guys will probably see an increase, and it, it's really good. It's a really good habit to get into doing it properly right off the bat. Anytime you create a page, be sure to come in here and do this because you don't want uh, the search engines just pulling their own information off your page. You want to be able to put it in yourself, customize that description to really tailor it to that page that you're trying to get ranked higher or anything like that. And say uh, you, you, f you fetch a recrawl now that I've done this information or I put this information in and you're still not seeing it show up as high as you would like. Uh, you can go in here and retweak this, do a recrawl again. A lot of it's trial and error. Um, I don't, when I'm working with clients, I don't always get it the first time. Once in a while, I'll get lucky and I will, but I'll have to go back here and change this, include certain terms, go back to the web page content, change that around a little bit, add some stuff, maybe retract some information if it sounds redundant, add images to it, anything that can really populate that page. And then I'll do a recrawl again, and you'll see where it lands. And if you're happy with it, good. Maybe add more information then. Now that you've already hit, you know, say you're in the second spot, that's pretty good. With all the content that you have on your page, you're currently ranking the two position. Now by adding more, saying more about your services, maybe linking to another page on your site, talking about an instructor that does the class, something like that, that's just adding more information to your page, which is good. I mean, the more information you can have, really, the better. Kathy asks, what does the default page checkbox control? Um, the default page checkbox, as Nick has shown right down on the bottom there. Yep, this guy here. When you check that, that sets which page you want to be your default page. So anytime I go to your web address, whether it's kathyswebsite.com or whatever, the default page is the very first page you're taken to. In yeah, that'll be your home page. In typically. virtually every case, it's the home page. So you can see here on the home page tab, the default page box is checked. There's mm -hmm. really no reason for you to ever check any other page other than the home page. Yeah. The really the only time is if maybe you're you created a splash page because you're doing a website redesign or something, so you need to change it to another page. But realistically, you want that home page to always be the page people get to. Um, for one, it'll have the highest domain authority. Domain authority is a thing that search engines will look at too when ranking your website. Um, it basically means how long your website's been around and how reputable it is. If you just started your website, you just bought that URL, you're going to have a domain authority of one uh, right off the bat. From there, you can only really build up um, by getting reputable links from other websites creating directory listings, you know, Manta, yellowpages.com, getting a Google Plus listing, Yelp, Facebook, any places like that that you can have a link back to your website is good. Paula asks, ranking is about wording and material in terms of quantity of material? 
quantity and quality. I mean, if you had a whole, you know, two folds of a page that was the same information over and over, it would get redundant and it probably wouldn't get ranked well. But say you had two pages that were real good content, that was all different stuff. Here it talks about personal training. Now it talks about your one-on-one -on -one services, two-on-one -on -one services, your group services. You know, keep going on the page. That's a lot of good content that you can have on the page, and it's, it's different from the previous bit. If you keep repeating yourself over and over, yeah, then it's, then it's more just say what you have to say and then be done. Don't, don't keep elaborating on the same stuff over and over. For, I mean, a couple of things with that. The search engine will see it and realize it's not necessary and you may get penalized. And the other bit is if I was a client going to your site and you kept just explaining yourself over and over and over again, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to read that much. You know, it's the same information going over. Try to make it unique and try to make it tailored for what the person would actually be wanting to see. I know we've gotten this question before, um, and like I said, SEO is, is a little bit confusing, so it can be overwhelming, for especially for the first-time um, mm -hmm. web owner. So what kind of services are first, What kind of what's included with their website, if anything? And um, what services do we offer to help them okay. out? I think right off the bat, when you guys get your site, there's, I don't think we have any SEO services included with it. Um, you guys get this little webinar here. We'll teach you about it. But really, we won't do anything on your site. Um, as a company, we do offer a premium services package, SEO service package. It's managed. Um, you would work with me or an SEO specialist on my team. And these we do as six-month plans. Now, for that six-month period, you would have me or a team member uh, be there constantly for you. We would be monitoring your website. We would be, you know, looking at competitors. We'd be working in webmaster tools and Analy Google analytics. Um, you'd get a monthly report from us showing keywords that you choose and also ones that we think are valuable to your website. So, if, you know, personal training, we would look for personal training, Georgia group, personal training, Georgia, things like that. Um, we would track those, then we'd send you a report out too that shows your analytics data for the last 30 days, how much traffic you've had, where it's come from, um, how your keywords are ranking, and then from there we, you know, we would just move forward and keep trying to do, do things to build the website up. One of the main things that I focus on, which I can highly recommend you guys do as well, is create directory listings for your website. Um, a simple Google search that just asks, you know, business directory listings can reveal a page that has 20 different links to 20 different directories. Um, some of them won't be very valuable, but there's a few I mentioned earlier. Manta holds some weight. Um, Yellow Pages is a good one to do. Hot Frog is actually a really good one as well. That has a lot of areas where you can put in keywords for your business. Um, but most importantly, you guys need to make sure you have a Google My Business profile. And those are typically only if you're a local business. You can also do it if you're not. Um, I'm not entirely sure how the setup for that works, but basically that Google My Business profile is what will show up. Say here I search, um, let's see, I'll search a location. Savannah Yoga. So I'm looking for yoga in Savannah. This right here is the Google local pack. And this says to get in here, you have to have a Google My Business profile. And to create that, just do a simple Google, Google search for Google My Business. You'll have to create an account. Um, if, or if you don't have one already created, you would have to do it. And then through here, you would search for your business. If nothing comes up, then you can create your own. And what this will do, as I said, it'll help you show up in that local pack, but it's also Google's directory. And I like to tell my clients it's Google sandbox and we just get to play in it. I mean, anything that you can use that's a Google tool can really help since there's such a dominant search engine. And this is a free service. I mean, I, this is one of the best things you guys can do for your business. You can get reviews on there too. The more reviews you have, I've seen rankings climb for that. 
and through that, you know, you can display your business address, the hours, um, show what you offer. There's so many things you can do with it. It's, it's actually a really amazing service for free. Rick asked, do other search engines besides Google do the, this end of the indexing the same way? Yep. Um, they have their own algorithm, but really it's all gone away from keywords and it's, it's always it's been focused on content now. Yahoo and Bing both use a Microsoft algorithm, I believe, and then Google has their own. Um, there's another up-and-coming search engine called DuckDuckGo, and it's one that uh, it's, it's getting big because they, it's, it's private. They don't uh, cache any of your searches. They don't take information from you like Google does. So, yeah, but to answer your question, they all do index the same. Um, I always try to focus on making sure my clients rank best in Google just because they are the most dominant search engine. Most, if people use Bing, you know, that, I mean, that's great too. It's a good search engine. But definitely, if you can, uh, create a Webmaster Tools account for both of them, Google and Bing, and submit your site maps to both of those. Paula asks, are these things you mentioned, like Hot Frog and Google My Business, do they cost money? Nope, they are free. Hot Frog is free. Google My Business is free. Manta is free. Some of these places may call you or you might get an email and they'll do some scare tactics on you and say, you know, oh, we, we scanned your business through 700 directories and you're only showing up in four. Pay us now to get put into a mall. Some of those things are a scam. Uh, be wary. You know, talk to someone that you trust to see if they would if they would agree with you doing that service. Um, the one that I use for my clients, it's Moz. Moz is a terrific website program. This is where Moz is a very reputable um, business in the SEO field. They give you a lot of free information, free tools, a lot of good things. Um, they have this Moz local service though which is exceptionally great basically what you do local listings made easy you enter your business name your zip code they'd look for your business listing and what they'll do is they'll, they'll want it verified so they'll look to your google my business account or your facebook page and you can verify it using those means one or the other or both and what this will do is push your information into all these local or all these major data aggregators. Um, let me see. I don't have myself logged in, but the, it's it's one payment of eighty four dollars a year. Um, you you put all the information in. This is really great for keeping your NAP score consistent. That's why I use it because it'll push. You'll put in all your information here one time. Type it in my business name address, containing location, your hours, you can put some pictures in there. Um, you can say services you, you offer, any certifications your business have or accreditations you put in your tagline. I mean, you can really put all your information in and then it sends it out to these aggregators. Some of them you've probably never heard of, like Newstar, but Newstar has 20 different directories that it pushes that information into. You know, Bing here, it would create a Bing Places account for you, which is, uh, it's similar to the Google My Business account, except it's Bing's version of it. So, I mean, you, you guys can be the judge of that, but that one's good to have too. But yeah, this is, it's a one-time fee, $84 a year, and it pushes your information out to all these places, and it's trusted, which is the best part. And if you say, you know, after a year you want to quit using it, you don't renew your subscription, they're not going to delete any of those listings that you created through them. They'll all still stay live. Um, there's some businesses that offer a similar plan to this, but if you quit using their service, then they'll delete what they did for you. So they, it's kind of like you're subscribing to their service to be on those directories, whereas this is you pay them once, they push you out, and then you can choose to have it again or not. Um, the perk about having it continuously is that, say your hours change, you can go in here, update your hours, and it'll send that information out to these hundred different directory listings instead of you having to manually go to them all and input that information yourself. And so there's a big perk to it, but even just doing it the one time, that can, that can be very beneficial. Yeah, 
yeah, to go back to that, um, those ones I did mention were free. This this Moz that is a paid service, um, and it, Moz actually won't put you into Hot Frog or Google My Business. Those are ones you'd have to create by yourself, anyways. But Hot Frog is a directory listing for anyone in the fitness field. I've, there's yoga studios on there, martial arts centers, personal trainers, health coaches. I mean, they're, those are great services to use. Kathy asks, how do we set up Google Analytics? Okay. Um, first off, you would need to have a, a Google email account, something associated with a Google account, whether it's a Gmail or um, depending on how you set it up yourself, it can be really any email address you work with that's associated. Um, to do that, though, you would really go to Google Analytics, click Sign In, Google Analytics Premium, and there's a few steps you'd ha you have to run through before it gets set up on your website. Um, I can just work on creating a new one here, and I'll put it onto one of these websites just to show you guys as an example. So this is pretty much what you would see right away. Since I already have an account, mine's already set up. But once you start, you would see something like this. So my account name um, would be Full Circle Health Coaching. Now my website name is really the same. You can title that. You can really title these areas however you'd like. Um, this is where it's important to get it right, though, for your website URL. So what I like to do is just go to the site and copy it so I know for sure that I'm getting the correct URL and putting that in. One thing I want to point out there in the URL portion that Nick's filling out, um, for his example, he's using the live edit URL just because the website we're using is just an example. Yep. You want so, to actually use your URL once you set your website live. If you've gone yep, through it and set up your own point. URL, you want to make sure that that's the information you're putting there. Yep, exactly. So if this is kathysbusiness.com, that's what you'd want to put there instead of kathysbusiness.liveatorora.com. You'd want your full URL in there. Um, here, you can choose an industry category. So typically for you guys that are the health coaches or trainers, it's beauty and fitness. That's what you would go with. Um, these are data sharing settings. I usually just leave them all quick or clicked. It, uh, this is you, you know, you're sending information to Google to help make their services better, which I don't, I don't see a problem with personally. So here you'd have to accept it. And now you are provided with a tracking ID. Now this is the ID that is custom tailored to this business property. So for that URL I input, IN curriculum 2aurora this is my tracking code. Now here, you'll see this is a good bit of information. What you'd want to do is copy this, but do not include these script tags. The script tags can, um, they've been known to have issues with our platform. And it's just best to not include them. So I would copy this bit of information, starting with function, ending with page view. Now I've copied that. I'll go back to my website. And they're actually going to contact support to have them place the code for them. Okay. So, yep. Then you would just email support this. They know not to include the script takes, so you yeah. could really send them this whole bit of information. But... Yeah, you would just email that to support then, and they would place it for you. Yep, you would just do that by uh, everybody knows how to submit the support ticket. Just send them that that information saying, hey, can you add this Google Analytics tracking code to my site? And they'll be able to easily do that for you. Yep, exactly. So from there, then, you can – and it will take a couple days for data to start aggregating. Um, once you, you'll start seeing data at a point, and then, you know, you can – can look at it and you would start seeing a good bit of information coming in about your traffic and you know here's how many sessions we had on this day um, there there's a lot of kind of helpful tools in analytics one of my personal favorite is traffic you can see the channels that your traffic comes in from so here you know from organic search now this is what I try to focus on and what these things I'm telling you guys can help increases your organic search. 
And what that is, is people looking for you. You're not paying for it. People aren't typing in your URL specifically. They're just doing a search and your business comes up. And that's what really you want to have be one of the highest points. So here there are 413 organic hits. Direct traffic is people typing in your URL directly. So Kathy's website.com. There you go. Referral traffic is traffic that is referred from another website whether it be Facebook or a directory listing or anything like that. Paid search, um, that would be if you know you're paying for pay-per-click advertising through uh, Google AdWords or some medium. And then social would be social media traffic. So any of those businesses that have a consistent NAP score, um, Full Circle Health Coaching's Facebook page, their Twitter page, their Yelp page, their Google My Business account, their Foursquare, those would all aggregate information into this category. And it would also be under referral category too. Because that traffic is all being referred. Anything else you feel like you need to cover, Nick? Um, well, we got a question from Katie that if, if you're a do-it-yourself or can you place that yourself? Yeah. I know yeah. I can answer that one. Generally, we don't just because in order to place the code or place the, the tracking code, you actually have to go into the, the actual coding of the website. And we just generally can don't. get a little hairy. Yeah, we don't advise people to go back there because if you change even a slight thing, it could break the website. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll show you guys, for instance, what it what it looks like back there, and all this bit of code that you'll see. Like, if I just deleted this one line, that could really wreck the website. And so, it's kind of best to have the professionals do it. That way, but, if we and that way, if we screw something up, it's our fault. Yeah, and then you guys don't have to worry about it, and we'll get it figured out for you. Right. Um. One last bit that I wanted to touch on was uh, titling and alt tagging images. And so where's that one that has the recipes? There we go. So um, titling and alt tagging images. The title of your image should reflect what it is. So um, in this case, these look like Cheerios to me, but it's for coconut date cookies. So you can go in here to the, you click on the image, go to the advanced tab, and here you'll see title and you'll see alt text. Now the title, it should be what, what the image is or what it's about. So in, in this instance, we are talking about coconut date cookies. So if I could title it coconut date, that actually sounds kind of good. <laughs> coconut date cookies recipe. Now your alt text is, it should also define the image, but here you can be a little more, uh, include a little bit more information about it. So. You know you put the title um, for the container, right? What's that, oh, shoot. No, that's right, because it'll the container is the image okay. on this one. It'll um, There's a couple ways you guys can place images on your website. This is one way to do it. Uh, this is the way I recommend doing it. It's a lot simpler and uh, more straightforward. But here your alt text could be um, full circle health coaching, coconut date cookies recipe. And that just adds a little bit more information uh, for the search engines to read. And so the importance of actually using the alt tags and title tags is that some people will have images turned off on their browsers or if there's uh, people that say they're blind and they're still using a computer, you know, they wouldn't be able to see this picture or anything, but when their screen reader is going through the page, it would actually get to this area and say, image, coconut date cookies recipe. And then it would go down onto the link. And if you have alt text on that next link, it would say view coconut date cookies recipe. And so for someone that's disabled using you know, trying to use your site or anything, this is really, really nice thing to do for them. And the other benefit of it is the search engines will read this. 
they'll see this image and they'll go, the alt text on this is full, full circle health coaching coconut date cookie recipe. So that's what this image is. It's, it's a, it's, this image is a coconut date cookie recipe or something like that. So you can include information there. And this is where if you search for this on a Google search, you could probably see it come up because you use these terms in your title and alt text. Can you scroll up a little bit, Nick? Sure. Um, let's see. I don't recall. Um, click, go to one of the other pages. Go to like the My Training or something. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's any references of an image being placed with the text tool. I don't think so. I think they're all placed with the image tool. I can just do it myself here. Yeah, can you place an image with the text tool and go over how to do that? Yeah. Um, for those yeah. of you that have joined in before, and we covered this um, in last week's webinar. Last week's webinar focused strictly on photos and how to add them and whatnot. Um, so if you were a part of that webinar, or if you've watched it, you know that there's different ways to add in images. So what Nick's going to do is, when you're adding an image via the text tool, how you can apply that same type of information that he just covered with the image element. Yeah. So here, um, this this text I'm going to input for this really won't relate to the page, but I'm just going to kind of show you how to do it. So uh, this image is my training. So let's say it's a this is a picture of someone training another person. Um, this image description field will populate your alt text, and you have to do the title text this way manually. And I'll show you how to do that. It's a little more tricky. Um, that's kind of why I recommend using the image tool. It's easier, but we'll walk you through it, and I think you guys will get the hang of it. So the description here, let's just say it's a uh, um, trainer or personal trainer and client working out. Let's say they're working out together. So I'd click OK. Great. So now this little piece here, this is this is your source code. I'm sure Alex has talked through this with you guys before. But you'll come in here, and I'm just going to highlight what is all. So this, this picture encompasses all of this information. This is the code for that image to show up on your site. So you'll see in this alt area here, that's what I put in, and that's what came from this description area. So when you put that, that'll populate your alt text. Now to do the title, as I said, this is your whole area. You actually have to enter that in yourself. So after image, or it says image style. After IMG, I would just put a space, title, equals, and then quotation marks. And then within those quotations marks, I would write out the title again, or a variation of uh, the title. So let's just say this title would be personal training. Oops at first full circle health coaching. Okay, so we'll click okay on that guy, save it. And now in the content here, when I hover over this image now, it says personal training at full circle health coaching. And so that shows up with the hover, which is nice. Um, and then that alt text is different, but that's what the search engines are reading and it gives the search engine more information on the image to index it accordingly. And I think that Firefox and Opera browser read this differently than Google Chrome and Internet Explorer do, or Microsoft Edge, whatever they call it now. Um, Chrome and Internet Ex Chrome and Edge read the title tag out, whereas I believe Opera and Firefox read the alt tag. Um, for you, guys, that's just a bit of information. It really doesn't matter to you guys as long as you're doing this. It's a really good habit to get into. Um, any questions on that? What happens if you decide to not do that? Not to tag it? Yeah. Um, you're, it's, it's not going to hurt you at all, but it's not going to help you either. It's, you're basically placing an image there that Google knows nothing about, so they can't index it accordingly. Um, for instance, when I place this image, it in... This image description area here, 
will be populated by what the image is titled itself. So watch when I delete it, and I'll re-add it. So this is the same image. I'm making it the same size as it was. Now it says the description is 13589-8423. Google doesn't know that this image is about personal training based off that you know bit of numbers. So that's why there's importance in actually putting your own information there. Um, if you have your images all titled properly, when you put them into the file manager on your website, you know, say you, you titled it personal training at full, full, full circle health coaching, then this would, that would actually be what the image description pops up right away. It's whatever the image was titled. But you have the option here to disregard that and put in your own alt text and your own title text. And so by doing that, it can only help. You won't get hurt for it unless you do some really bad keyword stuffing tactics. But I mean, what I just showed you, personal training at my business, that's not keyword stuffing. That's really showing what that image is. Cool. Yeah, um, another quick point. I'll show you how to do it on links too. And this goes along with the same thing as I said before. Um, you can, t you can title your links just as you title images. So this website, this goes to Integrated Nutrition. So I could, you know, title it Institute of Integrate or for Integrative Nutrition website or something like that. So now when people hover over that, they'll see Institute for Integrated Nutrition website. So they'll know where this link is going to go before they click it. Any questions, Any anything that uh, you want more clarification on? Any other additional questions for Nick? It's a lot of information. Like I said, I, we, all, we all understand that SEO can be a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you have questions, by all means, let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Now's the time, really. Yeah. Also, Nick, I want you to do me a favor. Under your profile, click on the help section. Under my profile? Yeah, toolbar. Off to the right. Uh, uh, where, your name, where it says, where it says your name. There you go. Click help. Gotcha. All right, I don't know if everybody has noticed this, but the actual look of the support portal has changed a little bit. Um, it's the same information and everything. You can go ahead and close that box. Go ahead and okay. click on knowledge base. The knowledge base. Yeah, the knowledge base will take you to where all the help guides and tutorials are listed. You also see up at the top of the page is where you can actually click to create a new ticket or uh, to schedule an appointment. If you go ahead and click on make an appointment, Nick. Yep. Now we have two options. One is the, the, the support appointment, which is our 20-minute uh, appointments. I believe they cost $20. Um, you can sp schedule one-on-one -on -one time to go over any questions or issues you're having with your site. We also have the SEO consultation. Um, that allows you to schedule a 30-minute appointment to go over the S any SEO questions or any SEO issues that you have yep. with your website. Um, yep. You would meet with me um, or a member of our team. Me or a member and of our team. We won't and do anything for you hands-on, but hands you know, we'll provide information just you know, like we'll I did today, just like only did it today. can be more in-depth if you're curious about analytics and really reading that data, really reading schedule that data. a consult, I can tell schedule you about it. If you want more information on your content, if you want me to run through your content with you and you know tell you where you can improve upon it, I mean, really, I would take this time, I'd look through your website, I'd look at directory listings and I'd tell you, you know, this directory you know, needs to be optimized you can do this here i just give you some great advice on how to really improve certain areas and point you in the right direction and point you in the right direction right and it's really nice because when you're meeting with nick or whoever on our team you're actually going through yep. your website. i'm not showing you the iin so one or anything like that right we're not going through any of the generic stuff like we do during the webinars mm -hmm. so so that was a good opportunity for for something like that yep. if you need exactly yep exactly Any other final questions for Nick? If 
feel like the Jeopardy music should be playing like right Jeopardy now. Music should be playing right now. <laughs> All right. If we don't have any additional questions for Nick, we can go ahead and we can open it up for some general questions, um, just like we normally do at the end of our webinar. So if you have any other questions for your website on anything, uh, we can open up the, the question and answer portion. Go ahead and take over the... Okay. How do I hand it off to you, Alex? How do I hand it off to you, Alex? I actually have it. Oh, you can just steal it from me. Just steal it from me. Yep. <laughs> all right. So thanks yeah, again, Nick. Absolutely, I appreciate guys. Your help I'm happy today. to help out. Absolutely, guys. I'm happy to help that all made sense to you. That all made sense to you. Yeah. No Thank problem. you very much. No problem. Um, Anne asks, is there a, any way to enlarge the size of the tabs to make them more prominent on the top of each page? It doesn't seem possible, and I wonder why this is not an option. Um, and can, I don't remember. Can you uh, let me know which template you have? And has the berry, which is the foodie bonanza. Okay, so she's talking about here. There isn't a way necessarily to make the tabs bigger, but what you can do when you are logged into your site, you can go into the design tab and you can click on typography and actually no, it's menu in colors in menu. This is where you can adjust it. You can adjust the size which kind of makes each listing bigger. So you can kind of adjust it that way. You see how it's changing in the background. So you can kind of do that. That allows you to kind of fit more things on there and customize the way it looks. And each one is gonna you know, be a little bit more specified based on what your menu listing is. Um, but that's, that's really the only way that there is to um, adjust that. Does that make sense, Anne? Does that kind of help answer that question? Perfect. You are welcome. Rick asks, how do I remove or change the favicon on the blog page? So if you go to your blog page, you will see, well, let me actually get to the blog service. Okay, so when you get to the blog page, um, your favicon generally will show up over off of to the side. Um, I know there's a way to go through and do it. I think if you go into the blog settings, you can remove that image right here, the sidebar. You can remove that by clicking no and saving the settings. Um, as far as changing it, if you change that, you can go into your dashboard click in account info and on the favicon section you can upload a new image but remember when you do that it's going to also replace it at the top of each one of your tabs so if you don't want it to show Rick you can go into your blog settings and and um, select to not show it um, like I have on on my this test site here and that would just be in the sidebar section by clicking no to show image Uh, we got a valued user asked, could you show me how to attach pay button to the paragraph? Um, it's going to depend. What kind of pay button are you talking about? Do you have a PayPal button? Do you have, um, what kind of button are you looking to add to your page? Uh, Minnie Joy asks, someone with a similar name shows up higher on SEO. Her Facebook and blog is The Nourishing Spoon, while mine is Nourishing Spoon. Um, that's kind of just an unfortunate situation. Nick, do you have any input on that? All right. Um, All right. Yeah, that is kind of um, an unfortunate yeah, situation. Kind of an unfortunate so situation. I just so looked that up too. So her business name is the Nourishing Spoon, and your Nourishing Spoon, and your Nourishing Spoon. Looking at your um, website, looking you could adjust your title tags and descriptions to kind of include some more information there. Um, looks like you have your Facebook linked up properly, so that's great. Properly, so that's great. 
Um, really, you, really, you know, focus you, on creating you know, directory focus listings. On creating directory listings. Build your website up. Build your website and up. And hopefully, you could see that and change. You could see that but change. I'm willing to guess that her I'm website has been around that longer. Her has been around and longer. that's probably why that she is ranking higher than you. Ranking higher than you. And and she's on the WordPress and domain. And she's on the WordPress uh, domain. With her, uh, she's on the with she's her, a subdomain on WordPress's sub domain, domain, which WordPress, WordPress domain, has a domain authority of ninety six. And your website has a domain authority of nine currently. So, of nine so currently. it'll take some time so to build that up. But nine is a really good start to be at. Um, I think it would just take some time. I think it would just take some time. It's another thing that I want to mention. A lot of times when people first get their website, they have the expectation that their website's going to be first whenever they do a search. That's never going to be the case. No. Like Nick says, it takes time. So, you know, you have to keep doing the different things like he's pointing out today, adding content, setting up your listings and your directory listings and stuff. And it'll build up your website. It's not going to happen overnight and it's not going to happen immediately. But if you keep following these processes and these steps, it will mm-hmm. get there. Yeah, you, mm-hmm. you really just have to yeah, keep an eye really on it. Just have to keep um, an eye and, on it and work to improve um, it. And work to improve it. Yeah, don't go in with the expectation yeah, that it'll happen overnight. That it'll happen overnight because you'll be disappointed. You'll be disappointed. <laughs> it, it takes time. I mean, it, it takes time. as I brought I mean, up those premium services I earlier, those I, work earlier. I work with clients. We set it as six months for a reason. Six months for a reason. Because you know you may see improvements in that first month, but if you really want to build a solid base, you need to keep at it and keep working to really solidify that foundation and to be able to build upon that. Then right now you have a pretty good foundation. Pretty good foundation. You just need to keep building up on. You just need to keep building that's, up that's on. That's really my recommendation. That's, that's really my recommendation. Her follow-up question is, I have a blog on Blogspot. Should I switch to WordPress? My website is older. She has more blog posts. I think if you switch to WordPress, you're going to be starting yeah. over. It's not going to yeah. do you any good because you'll have a new blog on WordPress versus your existing blog on Blogspot. So you'd actually be hurting yourself doing that, Joy. Um, Valued user asked previously about um, attaching a button to a paragraph uh, via PayPal. Um, There is a guide in the support portal that actually goes over how to add in um, a PayPal button. So you can go to the knowledge base and if you scroll down to the linking your party or your website to third party applications, there is a on page two a guide on adding a PayPal button to your website. It's a little kind of screenshot that gives you the examples of the different types of buttons you can add and walks you through the process of how you create the button within your PayPal account. Um, And then you'll actually get a snippet of HTML code from your PayPal account that you would then add to your website. Um, Now, if you wanted to add that to a paragraph, what I would recommend is, you know, you have a paragraph such as this um, I'll use this one as in the, that's not a good example. Let me find a better one. Um, so let's say I want to add in a, a button at the bottom of this paragraph. Get rid of that image. So I want to add in a PayPal button after in, betwe- after in between here. What I would do is I would take the HTML tool and drag it right here and paste in my code. Uh, once you paste in the code, if you go to the advanced tab, you can set the alignment so you can center it if you want to. Um, and that'll actually have it show up right below that paragraph. It'll look very similar to the examples that we have here. So here's an example of a PayPal button added right below a piece of text content. So that's a, that's the most basic way to do it. Um, for you, valued user, I think that would definitely help with that problem. So, Mary Mass, how can I change my template? I got the forks and spoons by mistake. If you want to change your template, all you have to do is go to the design tab, select the design gallery, choose the template that you would like. So, if you accidentally pick forks and spoons and you wanted to go to Foodie Bonanza, you select that template and click Applied Selected Design. 
Once you sp click Apply Selected Design, your template should switch. Um, let me just hop over to a Forks and Spoons site, and then I'll show you. Well, that's a Zest one. Same thing. I can do it here as well. So I'm going to log in, and I'm going to go to my Design tab, and I'm going to select my Design Gallery, and I want to change it to Foodie Bonanza. So I'm going to click Apply Selected Design. And I'm going to get this message saying I'm applying design. The website will refresh itself. And you'll see now the website is laid out in the Foodie Bonanza look. Now it's not going to look like a Foodie Bonanza template because every template is set up different, but it'll be in the same format. So you're going to have to go through and make some adjustments on your own to get your website looking the way that you want it to look. If you've gone through that process and sometimes you'll get there and your homepage will still look the same, so it'll still look like Zest. If that's the case, what you want to do is you want to click on Design again, click on Page Templates, and just make sure Homepage is set to Current. If it's not, just click Homepage and click Apply Selected Template. And that should guide you through it. Now if you want to go back, I can click on My Designs and select my original template and go backwards. Keep in mind, any time you, you change templates, you're going to have to do some readjusting of your content and your settings and all that stuff. Nothing's going to transfer from one template to the other as far as the color scheme and all that other stuff. Um, so you're going to have to go through it and, and kind of modify that stuff. So if you do want to change templates, I kind of recommend doing it before you get too involved in editing and, and building out your website. So hopefully that is helpful for you. Did you run into the issue, Miriam, where it wasn't applying to your homepage? Yep, so what you want to do if it's not applying, just click on Designs, and it should tell you right here in Current Design which template you're on, and then just make sure to go to Page Template and select Home, and then make sure it's current. And you actually want to be on your homepage, and that should take care of it. Valid user has a follow-up and how I will attach it to the appointment button shown on the page you just showed. Um, I'm not sure what you mean the appointment button on the page I just showed. If you, I'm, I'm the one above the PayPal button. On the, in the support portal on the guide that I was walking that I was showing you okay let me just hop back to that guide are you talking about these different kind of buttons here down here you want to kind of do it that way okay so this is actually on the health form page. Um, let me hop to a the Foodie Bonanza template just or the Forks and Spoon template just to kind of keep it consistent. And again, I pick my Zest template. Okay, so I'm gonna log in. Probably help if I entered in my information. Okay. So that example, excuse me, is on the health history form page. You can see that it's right here. Um, all it is is they took text and said, if you want to schedule an appointment, or whatever. Enter in your text. And then you would create your PayPal button like you have before um, in your PayPal account, and then just take the HTML tool and then paste in that code. And it would appear right below that text. Now on this specific example here, um, 
I'm not sure what they did. If that is part, if that whole to make a payment for the scheduled appointment, I'm not sure if that is actually being created within the PayPal account or not. I think so. I think that whole um, specification and the drop down menu and everything is actually coming from what you're creating in the PayPal account. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think the drop down menu is actually a feature that you can add in your PayPal account, um, especially if you have multiple things that people can purchase. So if you have multiple things within your PayPal account that people can sign up and, and, and purchase or schedule different appointments and whatever, um, I believe when you're setting up your button, it'll give you that the option to have that kind of drop down there. if we have any additional questions any other questions on any other topics and stuff um, you know any random uh, questions or anything like that I think for next week's uh, webinar we're actually going to to do something that was proposed via the Facebook group um, oh and with that said I'll actually post that there's a Facebook group for those of you that are new um, that was started by fellow health coaches um, for fellow health coaches it's a great place to go and get feedback on your website. People go in there and ask questions all the time. Um, I do my best to answer uh, questions when I can, and um, and so on. Um, but it's a it's a good resource to use, and I highly recommend it. So here's the URL to join that Facebook group. Um, I see a lot of information posted in there on a regular basis. Uh, so I definitely recommend that checking out. Um, I'm not sure why your username is showing up as valued user instead of your actual name. I would assume it has to do with the email address that you're using to sign in with. I, I'm not 100% certain. Sometimes when you join the meeting, you can actually get to you know, enter in your, your information if you want to. So, um, But as I was saying, one of the things that came up on the Facebook group, there is actually a couple of guides in the support portal that go over how to customize your website. Um, there's a couple of different examples in the guides to customizing your site. We took each of the three templates and we made some brief changes to, to eat three different pages on the website. So for example, on the Foodie Bonanza one, here is what the, the home page looks like by default. And this is what it looks like after the changes that we made. And then the rest of the guide actually walks through how each and every one of those changes were made. Um, somebody had mentioned on Facebook if we could perhaps take a webinar and pick one of the sites and one of the pages and go through each of those changes and how they're actually done. Um, a few people have had some issues trying to, to do some of the changes. Um, so. I think that might be the topic that we do for next week. Um, so hopefully people will find that helpful. Um, also the Facebook group is a, a very good resource for me to learn more about what kind of things you all want to learn about. So if there's specific topics you'd like to be covered in a webinar, um, specific health or help guides you'd like to see, uh, by all means, let, let us know. Um, I'm more than happy to give you guys the resources that you need to build out your websites. So any any information or feedback you can provide. Um, Nancy had a great question. For next time or now, can we add, how do we add more space to a page? It's a great question, Nancy. Um, you actually can add as much content to a page as you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, so for example, 
if I go to the About Me page on my website, and right now I only have this much content. If I go into edit mode, I see all of the different areas that I have. Um, I can add as much content to any one of those areas as I want. So if I wanted to add in more and more content and pages and so on, I can absolutely 100% do that. There's no limit to that kind of stuff. Is that kind of what you meant by adding more space, Nancy? You added a testimonials page and it actually did max you out? Really? Huh. Can you uh, put the URL for your website in there? We can take a look at it. I didn't realize, I don't, as far as I'm aware, there shouldn't be any limitation to how much content you can put on there. Um, but let's take a peek here. One of the things that I kind of want to I want to touch base on in regards to um, the the content that comes with your templates. So the the sample content, the sample blogs, the sample, all of that stuff. That same information comes with every single template um, that we have for IN and health coaches. So if you don't change it. Every other health of your one of every one of your fellow health coaches that don't change it, you all have the same content. So that means, from an SEO's perspective, that all of you are doing the exact same thing. So, for example, if if I have a website for my health coaching business and Nick has a website for his health coaching business, and we're in the same area and we have the exact same content. There really isn't any way for me to stand up above him because we have the exact same content on our website. So that's why we encourage you to, to go ahead and change up this content. It's just there as an example, as a guide to get you started. Um, you can still keep as much of the provided content as you want, but we do encourage you to go through and, and kind of personalize it and make it a little bit more reflective of you. So anyway. So back to Nancy's question with the testimonials page. So you actually, that is a lot of content. And it won't let you actually add in any more. Yeah, it should. You should still be able to, um, and like I said, you can add it into different um, things. Hmm, that's weird. One thing I would recommend, though, Nancy, especially for something like this, um, Nick brought up a good point here. When you have content like this with so much, it's best to do individual text boxes, one for each testimonial. And the reason for that is if for some reason you have to go in and edit one of these things, let's say if you want to get rid of, of this testimonial for whatever reason, that's going to affect everything else behind it. Um, so it makes it a lot easier to, to do individual text boxes for individual um, testimonials. You might have actually run into the section here, into the issue here, Nancy, because you're using one specific, one simple text box, you could very well hit the, the word limit for this text box. That's probably what the issue was, is you actually ran out of space in this text box. Um, as far as the actual page goes, you can add as much content to the page as you want to. Does that make sense? Another thing to, to point out here um, with your your lines here, there is actual a horizontal line feature right here. 
If you click on that, because I'm, I'm guessing here you use the dash key a bunch of times, because you can kind of see it right there. Um, if you actually click on the horizontal line, let me just scroll down to the bottom. So here we have this listing here. If I click horizontal line, it'll add a horizontal line for me automatically. Okay? And then if you go into your design tab, I can't remember if it's in colors. Yeah, in colors down here you have line divider. That actually lets you um, customize the look of that horizontal line. So you can adjust that there. Yep, to add text boxes to the page um, is the same, same process that you did before. You would just simply bring in one and you can paste, you can copy and paste all the information that you have. Um, but you're just gonna have to do it on a more manual basis. And let me kind of show you what I mean. So if I wanted to go down and add in a new testimonial box, so I would take the text area and bring it in here. But first what I'm gonna do is, um, I could just highlight this and copy it. And when I copy it, I actually have to use my keyboard shortcut for my browser, which I'm using Google Chrome, so it's um, Command C. Now I can bring in my text area and I can just paste it in. And then I can go through and what I wanna do is I wanna make sure to go to formats and change it to paragraph. And then I can save my, my change. And I can do the same thing with the very next one. And I can paste in the next one over. Like I said, Nancy, it'll be a little bit of a manual process for you, but it'll be so much easier for you going forward to be able to manage manage that aspect of it. Does that make sense? It's a good question though. And I, it's actually a new thing for me. I never knew that there was an actual limit to how much text you could put in a text box. So it's good to know. Anything else we have as far as questions for this week? Any other questions for Nick? Uh, SEO related or anything like that. Like I said, the, the webinar video will be posted in the support portal generally within 24 hours. Um, again, you can get there by going under your profile menu and clicking help. And you can either search for specific items or just click on knowledge base and browse through the, the different sections that we have. The webinar video gallery is the first one. Um, the most recent webinars I was posted first. So we'll have that posted within 24 hours. Um, other than that, I do recommend checking out the Facebook group. Um, it's, it's a really good resource. Um, I actually spend a lot of my time helping people in the Facebook group. Um, so it's a good place to, to kind of get some additional help if need be. So I definitely encourage that. And also, we have our weekly webinars, same time every week, um, free to join, so you can always um, come back and participate again. With that said, if there's no final questions, I think we'll wrap it up for this week. Um, thank you all for joining in. Thanks again to Nick for, for helping out with SEO. Hopefully you all found it informative. Um, I know it can be a little overwhelming. Uh, so hopefully we were able to kind of explain it a little bit for you. Um, if at any point in time you have additional questions about it, feel free to let us know. Um, and as we mentioned before, you always have the option to, to schedule an SEO consultation from the support portal if you wanted a little bit more individual help with your website. All right. So if there's nothing else, I think we'll call it a day. Um, thanks again for joining in. Same time next week. Keep an eye out for the, the video in the support portal. Should be up there probably later this afternoon, but by first thing tomorrow morning for sure. So once again, thank you for your time. We'll see you all again next week.